Greetings. Welcome back to my channel, Ham Radio Test and Review. My name is Dave. My call sign is N8DAV with my name and my call sign. I live in Prescott, Arizona, and I have a motto for my channel. It is, one test is worth a thousand expert opinions. So, today, I have decided to do an in-depth review and test of my REDS Engineering SRPT-03 Simplex Repeater. This is the box it comes in. It's a very, very nice box, and uh, it's uh, uh, very well built. And uh, so far, I've had this repeater for about a year, and it, the box shows no signs of falling apart. So I use it. I take the repeater out probably once or twice a day, and uh, I use it uh, quite often. It comes with two cables. One cable is the uh, USB-A, the USB-C charging cable, and it also comes with the um, cable that you use to connect uh, up to a Baofeng style uh, UV5R or equivalent uh, HT radio. So I'm going to show you how I hook it up and how I use it, and then I might go out and do some uh, testing, and we maybe we can see how far we can get using this uh, Red's uh, uh, engineering uh, uh, simplex repeater. I'll be right back. So I'm going to show you how to configure your Red's engineering simplex repeater model number SRPT03. This is uh, can be used for GMRS or for ham radio. The first thing you need to do is turn it on and then you push this button to set it up and it will start transmitting on Wi-Fi. So you come down and click on your Wi-Fi and find the SRPT3 and connect to it. And as you connect to it, The web page for the configuration will pop up. It may say that uh, it was, uh, it may need to be reloaded, but uh, it does come up. There we go. Reds Engineering SRPT03. Uh, on this page, you will find the IP address, MAC address, serial number, chip ID, and the CPU frequency. When you click on Home or on Configure right here, you come up with this page. And this page is your configuration page. So the first thing that we have is you can enable Station ID. Now you know all repeaters uh, that are on uh, the ham radio waves have to ID themselves every so often. I believe it's about every 10 minutes or so. They can either ID themselves uh, through voice or through uh, CW or Morse code. So when you click on Enable Station ID, uh, whatever you put into this box here is your station ID, and I put my call sign. Also, you can tell it how often you want to ID itself. In this case, I have it set up for every 600 seconds or every 10 minutes. Um, and then, of course, it's this is done in Morse code, uh, in words per minute, and you can set it anywhere between 5 and 40 words per minute. Uh, the station ID delay, I believe, is in uh, milliseconds, so it's 1,000 milliseconds. Transmit delay, 1,000 milliseconds. Carrier detect delay, 40 milliseconds. And uh, minimum message length uh, in seconds. So, uh, enable your LEDs. Now, this particular um, repeater uh, has a, a feature that allows you to be able to throw it into a box and uh, in a waterproof box and be able to hoist it up into a tree or put it up on the roof of your house or on your RV and to be able to get it to be, to be able to reach out farther. Uh, the battery life on this particular uh, repeater controller is so good that it can last for several days uh, depending upon how much use you put into it. Uh, when it's in the box, there's no need to have the LEDs uh, turned on, so you can actually disable the LEDs if you want by checking, unchecking the box, or in this case, I'm going to leave them on. You can also put it in deep sleep mode and enable debugging mode. And then when you're ready, you can click Save Settings, and it'll reset 
the, uh, the repeater and uh, then you um, just shut everything down and um, or you can reset it do a hard reset on it here as well you can also upgrade the firmware on this page as well all right so that's how you configure your reds engineering srpt 03 uh, re simplex repeater controller let me show you how easy it is to set up the reds engineering SRPT-03 simplex repeater. First of all, the repeater itself, as you can see, is quite small, all self-contained. Next thing you do is you bring in the cable. This is the end that plugs into the uh, repeater. And this is the end that plugs into your Baofeng style or Baofeng equivalent uh, to the UV-5R. So first you plug this in, like that. Then you bring your Baofeng into the picture. And you plug it into the microphone jack, just like that. All right. Next thing I do is I attach an antenna. In this case, I'm attaching my base station antenna to it. Then you turn it on and make sure that you don't turn the volume up very loud. You don't need to turn it up too much. If you turn it up too much, it'll distort. If you don't turn it on enough, then you won't get a signal at all. So let's try this real quick and see how this works. Oh, I forgot to turn it on. That's terrible. You want to review here and you forget to turn it on. All right. Let's try it. N8DAV, testing one, two, three, four. N8DAV, testing one, two, three, four. If you don't get much in the way of uh, distortion, then you know you haven't turned the volume up on the, uh, on the uh, radio too much. If you don't get any volume whatsoever, then you haven't turned it up enough. So it's very, very simple. It's very easy to do. Um, as you can see, that's all you need to do to get this repeater set up and going. Um, after you've configured it the first time that you get it and, uh, and take it out of the box. So let me do some, um, some testing with it and, um, I'll be right back and I'm going to go out in my truck and I'm going to drive around and I'm going to show you how well this thing works. All right. I'll be back in just a second. I've got it all set up. The radio on the right is the actual transmitter receiver. Uh, the controller, of course, is the RIDS engineering box. And then the radio on the left is the one that's going to be receiving the signal and putting out audio so you can hear me while I'm driving around testing the repeater out. Let's try it once before I go out to my truck. N8DAV, testing one, two, three. N8 DAV, testing one, two, three. I'm going to try this one more time. N8 DAV, testing one, two, three. N8 DAV, testing one, two, three. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. All right, let me go out and do some driving, and let's see how this uh, works. N8DAV, testing one, two, three, four. N8DAV, testing one, two, three, four. All right, I'm in my driveway and I'm leaving right now. I'm in my driveway and I'm leaving right now. This is N8DAV, I'm testing the Reds Engineering Simplex Repeater at the one mile mark. This is NADAV. I'm testing the Reds Engineering Simplex Repeater at the one mile mark. This is NADAV transmitting at the two mile mark. Reds Engineering SRPT 03 Simplex Repeater. This is NADAV transmitting at the three mile mark to the Reds Engineering SRPT 03 Simplex Repeater. Our very, very 
staticky due to the fact I was going uh, in through some hills and what we call the granite dells. Uh, things should get better as I get a little bit farther away. This is NADAV. I'm now at the four mile mark. I'm going to be heading out to the uh, Prescott Airport out here just to uh, do something a little bit different. I'm not doing distance testing since I've only got a 5-watt radio uh, in, the, in the shack and a 5-watt radio here in my truck. So um, this is the 4-mile mark transmission. This is NADAV, testing the RIS engineering uh, simplex repeater. I'm at the five mile mark and counting. This is NADAV at the six mile mark. Um, I don't know how well this is going to work, but let's find out. This is NADAV transmitting from the Prescott Airport, about six and a half miles from uh, my base station as the crew flies. And um, I think um, we, I had to up my power uh, to 15 watts here on the uh, mobile unit, um, but I've still only got about five watts coming back uh, to me from my base station. So it's hard to tell uh, at this moment whether the static I'm receiving is coming from the base station or if it's being retransmitted to me because I'm not hitting the base station. So when I get back um, to my shack, I will um, let you know uh, what I think of uh, what's going on. But as you can see, the um, Reds Engineering repeater controller, the Simplex repeater controller works very, very well. So during this in-depth review and testing of the REDS Engineering SRPT-03 Simplex Repeater, I found that, um, that the uh, configuration uh, using the Wi-Fi on either your phone, your tablet, or your computer, as I used, uh, is very, very easy, very simple, and very straightforward. Um, this is something that... Um, just about anybody can do. Um, as long as you've got a phone or tablet or computer, you can configure this thing uh, and, uh, and it's very, very simple and easy to do. Uh, the record time on this is very, very long compared to uh, the competition. Um, they do have another version, the O2 version, which has a much shorter uh, record time to it. Um, I found that I speak a lot, so I, uh, I prefer to have the uh, the longer record time uh, on the on this. Now, there is one feature that the cheap Chinese uh, ones that you get off of Amazon has over uh, the reds, and um, uh, it, all that is is uh, you can record a message for somebody else can pick it up later. I don't see much of an advantage to that because um, if they uh, aren't around with, for, you know, within a couple of hours of being having this repeater set up, uh, even maybe even a day, um, I, I I just don't see uh, the advantage of them being able to pick up a message uh, that you might want to leave uh, on the repeater for them. So uh, I don't know. It, it, that's a personal preference. Uh, so anyway, um, I do have to tell you that this uh, repeater controller is just well well made. And it works, and it works, and it works. I've used this thing hundreds of times already. I've owned it for uh, around a year, and I use it almost daily. And sometimes I set it up two, three times in a day, depending upon what it is that I'm, uh, I'm doing for the day and what kind of tests I'm going through. Uh, I can't uh, tell you how much I've enjoyed this, and it has been absolutely flawless, and it has worked very well. Even the cables that uh, come with it, um, are also very high quality. You can tell uh, by uh, just by touching them that the, uh, the the insulation on the wires themselves is silicon rather than than uh, cheap plastic or rubber rather than cheap plastic. Uh, they're very very flexible, and uh, it, again the whole feel of the box and the product and the and the uh, cables all uh, come to just give you a good sense of quality on this uh, unit. And I can vouch for the fact that after a year of using this thing, it still works uh, exactly the way it did from the day I first got it. 
I've actually only charged it uh, two or three times the whole time I've had it. Um, it holds a charge and it, uh, it just keeps on working. Um, the only uh, complaint I guess I've got is that um, I'm not always sure when the battery is getting low. So whenever I feel like, oh, well, I haven't charged it for a few weeks or months or whatever, I guess I better charge it. And I do. Uh, it doesn't take that long to charge. It works just, again, exactly like it's supposed to. So do I recommend um, this uh, Simplex repeater? I do. I believe that this is something uh, it's worth a little bit extra money to spend on an American-made product uh, that uh, isn't coming from China. And um, I've gotten very, very good uh, customer service from uh, Reds. And also, um, I've written them a few times asking them stupid questions. And uh, they put up with my stupid questions and give me uh, great answers back in return. So I don't know what else to say except um, this is a great product uh, from my opinion and from my use. And um, I highly recommend it. And I suggest that uh, if you're going to uh, get a um, Simplex uh, Parrot style repeater, that this be the one at the top of your list. All right. All right. My name is Dave. I live in Prescott, Arizona. My call sign is N8DAV with my name and my call sign. My motto for my channel is one test is worth a thousand expert opinions, and we sure did a lot of testing today. Anyway, uh, 73s to you, and so